um, I'm Pauline and um, we're taking coffee on your map right now and we're doing a short interview on radio personalities and we thought of you because we know that you're a UP student also so you know we thought that we could really connect with your background and maybe learn something about radio DJs and what a day in their job is like. So, uh, Hopefully you learn. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, um, Kat, what do you do? Okay, so um, I am Kat, but I'm Katrina on the radio. Okay. Uh, I'm Katrina uh, Mondays to Fridays, 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. on 99.5 Play FM. Um, it's a five-day-a-week, three-hour job, so it's fun because you feel like your work is only you know three hours, your brain is working, um, but it's tiring also because you're only working for three hours, but you have to expose yourself for three hours and think of, think really quickly and all of that. Um, after that, I do hosting as well. Uh, I had freelance hosting, so I'm not managed, but they get in touch with me through uh, my email. And they're very fun hosting gigs that I get. Um, uh, sometimes I get juices. I don't know if I can see their brand names. I also get Hara, uh, yeah, that one, the juice brand, and then we also get donuts, the, the ones with the juice. Yeah. Um, uh, and we all clothes. I get all clothes, wow. makeup. So that's food. I love hosting for everyone. <laughs> so that's fun also. And then recently I got um, accepted as a official Nike Training Club trainer. So Nike Training Club or NTC is the fitness app of Nike, and they launched uh, abroad different kinds of trainers. So in the Philippines, we're the first 10. So we're 10 women trainers and we're trying to inspire women who may or may not be athletes or you know they never worked out a day in their life to tell them that if you have a body then you are an athlete. So that's our, our peg or our campaign for the next couple of months. So there I'm very proud of that because I enjoy working out at home <laughs> and they recognize it and I'm very into girl power. So our, our show, I'm, it's called Pink Power. Um, I'm with a girl in the show, and we push women and empowerment and inspiration through the radio. So I'm, I'm really happy to be what doing what I'm doing at this age. Okay. Um, so since you're like an all-around like okay. girl, like super girl, um, but then when you focus on being a radio DJ, what what's that like for you? Like what what's a day like for Kat or Katrina? They're just Katrina. Katrina. The radio. Yeah. Katrina. Well, Katrina, the radio DJ, likes to sleep. <laughs> so um, I wake up around nine in the morning. My day starts around nine. And when you wake up, when I wake up, the first thing I think of is a coffee. And also, what am I going to talk about during the show? So people think that if you have a three to six, or if you have three hours on the radio. You only work for three hours, but actually your brain is working the entire day or the 24 hours because you're constantly trying to find something to talk about, something to make interesting. Because honestly, they always tell us that if people want to find out news bits, they can just check the internet. It's so accessible, mm -hmm. right? And the radio was just background noise. Mm -hmm. But us, we're trying to, and in the station we only talk for a minute, we're trying to be as quick and as um, concise and as yeah. witty as possible in a minute. Mm -hmm. Also, it's possible to make sense in a minute, that's what I learned. So that's what we try to work on also every day. So that's, that's my day, just trying always and constantly to um, be, be, be able to inject in intelligence and inspiration <laughs> in one minute uh, for the three hours of my show. And then after I work out, uh, or I host before and after, um, and then the day goes on again. So that's fun for me, yeah. So um, since you mentioned that it's already been a part of your like daily routine, and then, you know, like being a DJ is really fun for you, how did you get into like this, this industry? Or when did you realize that you want to be a DJ. Yeah, the college did interest you. Yeah. Uh, well, I was in college. I was in UP. I was a... What was I? I have a lot of courses to eh? say. Oh. I was a... I was a computer engineering student and then also a business ad student and then also a uh, no course student and then also a journal student. I graduated June. Um, and so I didn't know what I want to do because I was a lot of things but I was not interested in a lot in anything in particular. Okay. So um, it was sort of an accident. I like to talk. 
I never hosted in high school or college. Yeah, in high school. I like to talk. I, so in college, I just joined the Magic 89.9 Junior Jock audition. Program. Yeah, the program. So I got in, and 2011 basically that changed everything because I realized I can do this. Talking is fun. Uh, 2012, I auditioned for Courtside for the UAE. Got in UE, and that also sort of catapulted me because I found that I didn't only have to talk behind the scenes. I could, yes, exactly. And sometimes you need confidence for that. <laughs> yeah. So there. Um, what else? After that, I started hosting for reels. And on my birthday last year, when I was gonna graduate, I was delayed. So I was gonna graduate last year. I had no job. I had no more court side. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I got a call from 99.5 uh, Play FM station manager on my birthday, <laughs> and he said, "Hey, do you want to try and be a DJ?" So on May 5, this May 5 is my one-year anniversary as a real DJ. <laughs> with the, wow, so that's my story, and it kind of I, I'm older than a lot of um, other people who got into radio. Uh -huh. So a lot of the junior jobs in Magic and also the rookies in Play FM, mm -hmm. they're young, they're college. I was 22. I was supposed to be a graduate, graduating na, ganon. But um, my story, I feel, it sort of, I can tell people, you know what? You can be lost yeah. and it's fine. <laughs> as long as you keep going, mm -hmm. As long as you, you keep going and you keep working on something, then you're good. You're good. You're good. So we're good. Hi. Hi. Oh, I, I'm Sam. Um, could you please tell us more about your college life? Oh, so first of all, what is the degree program that you took when you were in college? A lot. Um, I, I entered UP uh, as a computer engineering student with the mindset of becoming a certified public accountant, so BAA. I left journalism <laughs> but in my defense I enjoyed math and I enjoyed challenges but also I really had a passion for writing ever since so it just made sense why not study you know something like uh, as, as gritty and as truthful as journalism and I'm very happy with all that I've gone through in college and so was that really your passion or interest ever since you were a kid the degree program that you finished? Oh, well, um, I discovered it after I realized that I was unhappy doing accounting and and also because it's so hard. Like, I had no, I don't know, it was not, sometimes when, it, when things are difficult in my life, I don't mind as long as it's something that I love, but those things that I went through in college, I really could not stand it. So that's when I realized, you know what, I think it's time to check myself before I get out of UP and just not be a good person, like hate life. So um, I could, you could say that I graduated with a degree program that was a passion of mine since I was a child because I did enjoy writing and also interacting with different people. So yeah. Um, so what are the college experiences that you had that you think best prepared you for the job that you are doing right now? For radio yes. and for hosting, um, more than, because they always say that anyone can talk. Anyone can be on the radio and just talk, right? It's more of how you deliver something, uh, your personality towards meeting uh, new people when you do interviews. And I think UP, most especially, it was the best decision. I loved UP and I loved everything. My All my six years there, I loved it so much because that UP gave you that. UP gave you a chance to, or gave me personally a chance to interact with different kinds of people. People who are cruel, some of them, and just, why are you even here, kind of people. And people who are so smart and don't look down on you. And also those so smart who look down on you. Um, I remember when I got into MassCom, I was one of the oldest students and I was very, I'm very outgoing, but at the same time when I was there, I was very shy because, you know, I was supposed to be graduating now. And my self-esteem was very low. Um, contrary to what you see now, um, I, I was very, I, I wouldn't make any friends in NASCOM. 
But when I got there, I was surprised that they did And also, I was in the court side, so I was, sometimes I was late because I had a game. Um, when I got there, a lot of students did not see me as an old... Um, this is an old student who did not make it, and so she's... You know, how I saw myself. I saw myself very low. They just treated me as if I was some student. Oh, you just do your job. And I liked that. That, that was one of my... It humbled me at the same time. It made me realize that um, you're only defined by how you think of yourself. And the people around you, maybe they're not even thinking that way. So that was... I loved it. Um, what else? Professors. Scary professors also freaked me out the most. Oh, inspirational professors. I went through mass comm professors and also speech comm, a uh, one speech comm professor or a couple that sort of inspired me to be in media because we had exercises during their classes. And I can't name all of them, but Mamel and Mam Pinky were the biggest. They're, they're really big in the radio industry, in the voiceover industry, and it's because of them that I actually said, okay, maybe let's try this out. So I'm Shia. Hi. I'm Randall, and here's my first question. So, what do you like most about working in this company? Fair play, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the, my favorite thing is that we're really a super cliche thing to say, but we are really a family. Um, when things are bad, our dad or our station manager and our other kuyas, our production heads and, and musical directors, they really call you out as if, you know, you're, you're how your kuya or ate or dad would. And they do it always with love and with the intent of trying to make you better. And they don't wait. They call you out on the spot. So if I do a really horrible ad lib, Right after the ad lib, they'll come in and say that was bad. Can you change that? Kind of that. And you know, sometimes you feel kind of tempo, but it's only you always have to. We always have to remember. I have to remember that they mean so well, and they will never give advice that will make me sound horrible on air. So they always they take care, and we take care of our own. Um, also, the, all the interviews that they give us and the chances that they give us to meet uh, different famous people. Um, I got to meet, I can't pinpoint anymore how many people I've met through the FM, but I got to meet Echo Smith. I got to meet um, one of the boys from Westlife. What's his name? Wow. Shane Phelan. Shane Phelan. Phelan. And then I got to meet um, basketball players, uh, DJs, international DJs. I got to go to concerts for free. So we have amazing perks at the station. And also the love that um, all the people I'm working with, the love they have, and how they inspire me to do better as well. Because they love radio and voiceover so much. And I want to be as good or you know, to be even at that level with them as well. So yeah. So before working here at Play FM, what were you doing? And how did it, it differ from your work before? Oh, um, before play, I was in school, but at the same time, I was a courtside reporter for UE for two years. Um, the atmosphere is different only in the way that with courtside reporting, you're running around the place. Yeah. With radio, you're in one place, la, and you're all there for the entire time. So, pag may nakainisan, if you're pissed at someone in the station, you're, you're gonna see them because you're just in such a small uh, station. Courtside, you can avoid, like you can walk around. Um, I think they're very similar in the in this in a sense that they uh, both of my mentors or all of my mentors from both um, places always would want the best for you and call you out also. But I think courtside was nicer since we were college students as compared to now, you know, you're professional and all of that. So yeah, the family vibe was the same. It's only maybe how they handle each other. I mean, us during uh, work that differs. Hi, hi, Hello. I'm Madel, and I want to learn more about the challenging life of the DJ. So, <laughs> yes. So far in your job as a DJ, what are the unique challenges that you are? Well, the best one, I think, was when the program turned off. So the worst thing or the, the worst thing that could happen to me, uh, for me, is dead air on air. Because people expect when they're listening to the radio that there's music or someone talking. 
and if it just suddenly disappears, our hearts kind of explode. So uh, dead air is a no-no to us. And one time, the program that we were using, it's called OTS, it closed. So I was sitting there looking at nothing, and I didn't know how to fix it. Because sometimes um, when we do stuff, uh, we can add songs to make it better. Uh, but this time, not. So I think dead air is a big issue for DJs. Also, not knowing what to say. Um, black, na mind block, pag you black out, that's the worst. Because even if you have your new spit there, it's really not gonna come. Uh, also, interviewing, that's a big challenge because um, we have a USB again, it's one minute talk time. And when we have interviews, we extend it. So there's three minutes, five minutes, and sometimes the people you interview, they just keep talking. They want to talk about themselves or their event. We don't know how to, I, I used to not know how to cut, cut that. Yes, exactly. So now that's a challenge also to still learn. And I'm still learning how to politely end the conversation and go on to another song. So those are just some of the challenges. It's really fun though. Um, when And it's a daily challenge for us. It's fun, but it's always going to be this always going to be present, all the challenges we have. It's never going to be, oh, you've overcome it. It's always, okay, are you ready for this one this time? That's what I face every day. Yeah. Okay, so we all experience, like, those stressful things, right? So when you have these stressful days, how do you unwind or wash the stress? I work out every after uh, radio. I go to the gym or at home and I just sweat the stress away. Sometimes it's a really horrible day and they always remind us that no matter how good of a DJ or a talent you are, you're really just going to have a bad day. So um, it's hard to accept though, most especially when you feel like, no, everything has to be perfect. Honor and excellence. Yeah. But um, they remind us that you know sometimes it's really going to be horrible and you just got to pick yourself up and remind yourself tomorrow is a new day and just do better again and you're going to be fine. So I like to work out, maybe have some scotch, uh, hang out with my friends because they remind me of the real world. On the radio, you're Katrina. I'm Katrina. Outside, it's a different person. So, yeah. Alright, so hi Kat, I'm Gerald. And for the last part of our interview, I would like to ask first, what's the next step for Kat? Wow! Wait, let's stay in this step. Um, next step. Well, I really, really want to be uh, the best radio DJ I could be. Because again, it's only my first official year this year. Um, and I have, I've learned so much already from just one year being exposed on the radio almost every day and I have so much more to learn because you're, I'm, all, I'm constantly surrounded by all these great people who don't even think they're as great as they are so that fascinates me that my idols don't even feel that you know they are it and if they're that hungry then I should be even hungrier uh, with my career here as not just a radio DJ but also as a host and as a voiceover I may be the greatest leap I could uh, say or step I could talk about is being a voiceover. I find it so cool that um, my prof was the voice of the MRT, like the Kubao station, Kubao, that one. And I was just like, that's amazing that those are real voices or the commercials, the, the one who sang the Ariel commercial. <laughs> I don't know. I want to be that and I, wanted, I want to um, be able to have power and control with my voice so that I could sound professional and I, don't, I can sound not my age. And when people hear the commercial, oh, that's my friend. So that, I find that very cool. Okay, so for the last question is, okay. for those maybe who are watching right now and the uh, aspiring DJs, mm -hmm. what advice could you give them? Wow, well, um, all the cliches that they've ever talked about, I always say cliches because really every time I think about my life, it's so, it is a whole, puro cliche na siya. Um, don't give up. If it's really what you want, you keep going. Um, it's funny when people say I want to be a radio DJ because the truth is there's no money in it. 
you have to work really hard to sustain your livelihood. I mean, beyond uh, being a radio DJ. And basically, you're in a booth. There's our, our holidays are not holidays. So, the last bagyo also, when everyone was not allowed to go to school, we were at work. So, we have a really weird schedule, but it's so much fun. And if it's what you want, if it's what you want, just keep, always keep trying to expose yourself in things that have to do with it. Interview other people. Even your daily interactions with other people could be considered a radio interview because that's how we are on the radio. We're very natural. So, do that. Put it in your mind that, oh, I want to be maayos. I want to be a professional. So, there. Another is, um, this is, learn a language. I say this because some people are really good at Tagalog, Filipino. Some people are really good at Cebuano. And there's a market for radio DJs in the province as well. Some people are good at English. Some are not. For me, if you want to be an English radio DJ, and I know it sounds bad that they want people who have Americanized accents, but that's what... Um, the demand for the people on the radio is right now. So if it really is your passion, practice trying to change the way you speak English. Not very polite. Watch a lot of shows. It's very fun to imitate or any other accent that you want. If you want to go, I can't do accents, but Western, American. Um, and another is, uh, what they say? Expose yourself. Um, learn a new language. Learn a new language. Uh, maybe the best is attitude um, when it mold yourself to be strong in a sense that if you get criticism you are not easily hurt because in radio and in media in general when they give you feedback it's so instant it's as if nothing can hurt you but words hurt so I think build a really strong understanding that when people criticize you that matter and only those who matter are your bosses and the audience. They matter. Also, when they respond uh, with um, negative tweets or social media posts, uh, learn to accept it uh, properly or in in a way that we have been learning or and still are learning uh, to accept it there. And also, visit us at the station. If we know who what you look like, maybe you'll be the next me. But not yet, because I just started. So. Yeah, it's not not bad to be friends with your radio DJs because we're so accessible. You just visit us. Maybe the ones that interviewed now. Yeah, um, maybe one of you are going to be my future partner. We never know. All right. So in behalf of my group mates, Kat, thank you. We had a wonderful time here at Clay FM, and we hope that <laughs> our audience learned some. I, I hope that our audience learned a lot from you as I much as we did. All right. As a token of our appreciation, we have this wonderful Tom Deron.